Parkinson's is a progressive neurodegenerative disease. For a long time, actor Michael J. Fox may have been Canada's most famous person living with Parkinson's until our next guest won the inaugural season of The Amazing Race Canada with his Parkinson's front and center. Tim Haig doesn't let the condition slow him down. He speaks of various events to create greater awareness of Parkinson's. He also founded the charity U-Turn Parkinson's and has written a memoir called Perseverance, the seven skills you need to survive, thrive, and accomplish more than you ever imagined. And he joins us now for more. Hi, welcome to the agenda. Hi, Nam. Thank you for having me. So back in 2013, you and your son, uh, Tim Jr., uh, were among the teams competing in The Amazing Race Canada. Um, here's how you were introduced in the first episode of the show. Uh, Sheldon, please roll. Tim and Tim Jr., father and son from Winnipeg. I've always thought that my dad's Superman. I'm super honored to be doing the race with my dad. <laughs> In February 2011, I was officially diagnosed with Parkinson's. Today, there's no cure for it. Five years from now, I won't have the physical capability to do this race. We have a chance to show that just because you're diagnosed with something, that diagnosis doesn't have to define your life. Um, on the show, you were known as the Two Tims. Yep. <laughs> um, and you actually went on to win, and you were the big winners of Amazing Race Canada. Unbelievably so, yes. Uh, <laughs> were you correct in saying that within a few years, you wouldn't have the physical capability to undertake that sort of challenge? Yeah, probably. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's been five years to now since, since we ran. Mm -hmm. And I think I would be pretty hard pressed to actually get it done. I would like, I mean, I want to say, no, I could go do it. Absolutely, I can get right. this done again. But I mean, I look back now and I was, my Parkinson's wasn't nearly as bad then as it is now. So I think it would be a pretty big challenge to get done. Well, looking back, and you've written this book called Perseverance, yeah. um, trying to show people that they can move beyond their um, comfort zone. Yeah. Looking back, you winning that race with your son, what do you think that meant for people living with Parkinson's? Oh, that's, that's just been a fabulous part of the story now. I mean, everywhere we go, people tell us that they took so much encouragement, so much inspiration from our win, mm -hmm. that if I could do that, and they can do their thing in life. And that's really what this has turned into for me, is showing people that you can probably do a whole lot more than what you think you can. If you're willing to get out there, push a little bit, persevere, and give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And that's what the race really taught me, is that there's way more that I can do than what I probably think I can. And in the book, you write about, in some ways, you were uncomfortable. You felt a bit um, under the spotlight because of your yeah. Parkinson's and some of the challenges that you had in the race. Uh, looking back, when did Parkinson's truly live up to your description of what you say you're be the best friend that you hate? You know what, it probably actually came after the race, um, in truth. I mean, the race, when we won, the won and we got through the flags and the flowers, I felt like that I'd really defeated Parkinson's that day, mm. that um, it wasn't able to stop us in this. But becoming that friend whom I hate, probably came after the race as I began to really realize that I, I can do this. I can live with Parkinson's. I can still live a good life with Parkinson's. It may not look like I thought it would, but there's still lots of things that I can still do, things that I can still accomplish. And running was something that was very important to you, and yes. you still run. Yes. Why do you think it's uh, important to still try to do the things that you did before, that you enjoyed? Well, running's always been a part of my life. It's, it's been a, a passion that I've pursued for a long time. And for a while, Parkinson's took it away from me through cramping and various things that I was experiencing. And be able, being able to come back to it and start running again gives me that level of, of peace and control that we sometimes miss, right? Mm -hmm. Parkinson's comes along and quietly sneaks away pieces of your life and takes things away. And to be able to exert some level of control over it is just incredibly important and empowering. Mm -hmm. And so I continually encourage people, go back to those things that Parkinson's has taken and see if you can't exert some measure of control over them in some small way. Because I certainly don't run as fast as I used to. I don't. Well, I guess I'm running as far as I used to. You used to do a seven minute mile, right? <laughs> I used to do a seven minute mile. There's yeah. no more seven minute miles. <laughs> but you know what? There is a nine minute mile. There's a 10 minute mile. And uh, that's sure better than sitting on the couch doing a zero minute mile. Mm. Well, after you won uh, the Amazing Race Canada, you founded a charity called U-Turn Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. uh, what gaps in people's experience of Parkinson's were you aiming to address with your organization? 
Yeah, when I was first diagnosed in Manitoba, there was very little to no resources for people with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. You were diagnosed, given some pills, given a pamphlet, and sent home. And yet we know science has proven that exercise is so very beneficial to us in meeting the demands that Parkinson's put up, puts on our body and helping us mitigate the symptoms. They say it's just as good as the medication that we take. Mm -hmm. So when we started the U-Turn Parkinson's, we, d we wanted to create a wellness center that would help people live well with this disease, empower them in their pursuit of wellness so that they can get out, exercise, and take that medication that will help them live better with, with their disease. Uh, in the book, you write about your beginnings uh, your, as a child, a mixed race child in the US. You also write about your experience in the amazing race. Mm -hmm. And at the back of the book, uh, you list a, a series of seven lessons that you believe can help people learn how to persevere. Uh, under the banner of Accept Limits, you write, I acknowledge that modern medicine cures very little and that I'll likely go to my grave with this new best friend that I hate. Um, how difficult a lesson is that to learn? Well, it can be very hard. We, as a people, we tend to want to cure things. We want to fix it. We want this thing to go away, right? Mm -hmm. And to sit back and acknowledge that it's, there's just so few things that we actually cure. There's so few things that we actually get rid of. It's difficult to think that there may not be a cure for this in my lifetime. So the way that I counter that then is to say, well, what can I do today? How can I live well today so that if there is a cure or when that day comes, I'm in the best possible position I could be to make use of it. Because if I don't, if I sit on the couch and just sit and wait for that magic bullet to come along that cures everything, I may not have the muscle mass to run. I may not have the physical strength to run. I may have lost so many other things that I need to live well when the cure arrives. What do you think you've gained by learning that lesson? Perseverance. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that you've got to get up every day. You've got to, you've got to deal with that happiness myth that I write about, that we so often don't want to believe that bad things should happen to us. And that I've got to get my mind around the fact that even with Parkinson's, my life is better than billions of people on the planet. That there are so many people who would be more than happy to trade places with me, even with my Parkinson's. I think that's really hard for people to come to that conclusion or to come to that yeah. realization. Yeah, we need to travel more. Mm. We need to get out. We need to see what the rest of the world really looks like. I've had the opportunity to travel to Colombia, Nicaragua, uh, Nepal, India, and there are billions of people who live in abject poverty who would be more than happy to take my life and take my Parkinson's if they had the choice. And that moves me deeply to be thankful for everything that I've been given, even with Parkinson's, and to, to, to view life differently and to not feel like I'm the center of the universe and that I need to be fixed before so many other people. Well, another of the lessons that you list is to cease striving. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, striving is a word that I think we use quite inappropriately or wrong mm -hmm. often. In what ways? Well, you look up the word striving, you find that it comes from the old English, meaning to contend, to quarrel, to fight. It has a bit of the old French attached to it for the word strife. And it basically comes down to that freaked out, stressed out response that says, by God, I'm going to make this thing happen no matter what it takes. And it, I'll relate it to me shaking right now. I wish I could make it all stop. And sometimes we say to ourselves, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this stop. I'm going to make this Parkinson's go away. It is not going to control my life. I'm going to set the parameters. I'm going to be in charge. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. I am going to run my life. And the simple fact is, I can't make it stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. I simply can't make it stop. So how am I going to be joyful, not necessarily happy, but joyful in living my life even when my Parkinson's won't go away and I can't make the doggone tremor stop. Well, about halfway through the 10 legs of the amazing race, uh, you played what's known as a U-turn against one of the other teams in order to slow them down, yes. to gain an advantage. Yes, we um, did. How did that strategy tie into another of the lessons that you outlined for learning perseverance? Well, take every advantage. In the race, we were pariahs for some because we had been mean guys. We had played the U-turn. And I just remind people that U the U-turn was a very fair part of the game. We were there to win. We were there to do our level best. And we were going to take every advantage 
that was given to us to do that. And in life, I have learned that lesson, to take every advantage that's presented to you. And thus, I'm running again. Um, life has presented the opportunity now through some medication, medical management to be able to run again. So I started back in the winter because that's when I could run. That's when my body stopped curling up. That's when I stopped getting the cramps because of the medication I'd started. So I started running again. And I learned that lesson from the race to take every advantage when it's presented, when, it, when it's there. And how do you think that adds to um, what you're experiencing right now? Well, it just reminds me once again that in the moment, well, you have to live in the moment. You have to live in the day that, you're, that you wake up. And to take the day that, as it's given to you and to do your level best with it right here and now. And not, not wait for tomorrow, not wait for next week. Those days may never come. And you may never get better. I may never, I, never, I may never be better than what I am right now. So how can I live my best in this moment with the disease as it presents today? Um, in addition to your work with U-Turn Parkinson's, you spend a lot of time speaking to various groups about your experiences uh, of, of Parkinson's. Uh, what are your goals for that part of your work? Well, I really hope that people with Parkinson's can take away the message of, you can do this. Whatever you're presented with today, whatever your Parkinson's looks like, you can do this. How do you come to that realization? Because I think it would be very difficult to be able to accept it and then to try to figure out how you're going to navigate that. Well, that's a big piece of it, is accepting it. it is accepting the reality that, OK, this is where my life is. Mm -hmm. I never ex expected it to be here. I never expected to have a hard time speaking. Never expected to have a hard time controlling my body. But this is what it is. So. Let's go on TVO and let's talk about it. How many nurses do you know? How many people do you know that get to do the things that I've had the opportunity to do in life? Mm -hmm. Not many. And the only reason I sit here today is because I shake. It's because I have Parkinson's. Parkinson's has brought me far more good things than it has bad so far. And so I accept that and I move forward with that mm -hmm. and, and try to live my best. And looking back, having done the race, um, being able to travel around the world to speak to different uh, groups of people. What do you think has been uh, the biggest lesson that you've learned? One of the biggest lessons I've taken away is the fact that I can do more than I thought I could. Mm -hmm. um, you can take a very difficult situation and allow it to make you a better person if you're willing. And that is way easier to say than do. Well, on those dark days when everything is bleak and miserable, it's really hard to live that out. But the fact is, if you let difficulty refine you, it'll change your character, it'll deepen you, it'll add color and texture and light and warmth to your life that you never would have imagined. And just before I let you go, one of the things that you mentioned in the book that I wanted to touch on is that you say you don't have to be born with perseverance, that you can actually learn it. I wasn't born with perseverance, <laughs> and I'm still learning it. Mm -hmm. It's daily being driven into my life. Uh, and every day, that I, every day that I get older, every day that my Parkinson's is a little worse, I'm learning some new way to persevere with it and how to live my best. Thank you so much, Tim, for being here. We really appreciate You're you coming welcome. into TVO. Thank you now. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.